So let's take a look at iTunes U on the iPad. Apple have recently um, allowed us to start creating courses and editing and uh, doing a lot more creation on the iPad. Uh, in the past, it's just been a consumer type device um, app on the iPad, but now we can start creating. So you can see here, I've got a few courses and, and today we're gonna actually walk you through basically how to create a course um, on the iPad app, iTunes U. So let's take a look, you can see there, I've got a few courses that I use for my staff development um, and also augmented reality with Courtney uh, Pepe, which is another ADE. Um, so here I'm going to create a course and show you through. Now when we create a course, I have to tell you that it revolves around, I guess, the, the Apple ecosystem. So we need an Apple ID to actually create content for our kids and our staff here. So uh, that's going to be important to actually do. So what I'm going to do here is create a little course name. Let's just say that I wanted to create a course um, on iBeacon for my staff and start to talk about some of the iBeacon stuff that we're doing out at Flinders. Um, we'll do a, a short and just say I B101 uh, and department, we can put things in there. I'm just going to say staff PD for this one. And we can enter also um, our description as well, uh, which is important because um, as we create more and more courses, we want to be able to identify our courses as well. iBeacon, uh, let's just say developments here. Um, so after you've done that, we just click on next. You can see how it easy, easy it is to use. It's got the institution that I'm part of. Um, I'm going to select there the level here. We're going to go with professional and vocational there. Go back. Um, you can actually talk about explicit material or not, depending on what kind of course. We're going to go a category here. Uh, let's just say that it's, uh, we're going to use our iBeacon stuff today with teaching and learning. Uh, we need to actually select these. Let's go learning resources and a type of course. Let's just say it's self-paced for now. And we'll say it happens over the course of five weeks. You can see just setting up my course, it's really easy to use. Um, I actually think it's a, a lot easier to use than the actual web-based version through iTunes. Um, so see how you, what you think. But uh, there we go. Down there, we can actually choose a license for it. Um, so for this one, we might just get, uh, we might just say uh, non-commercial. Uh, for this one and then basically I click next. Now just be aware that you need to actually follow those things to actually create that. Uh, you can see there I've got no posts, no discussions, no students enrolled and, and no materials but that's okay we can work through that. So what I'm going to do now is just press on the actual course and it will open and you can see an overview there. I can edit that as well um, just by pressing the edit button at the top right hand corner. We can even put in some instructional details by default. It knows who I am through my Apple ID, so it's actually created that. Um, and then we've got our outline here. Now, the outline is really, really important uh, because we need that to actually, um, I guess, match our post to later on. So really think about your outline of your course and what you're trying to achieve. Uh, in this tutorial, we'll just add one uh, course outline just to show you how it is. So we're going to press edit. And our first one might be, uh, introduction to beacons. Um, I'll press done uh, and you can see there that that will come down to my uh, straight away in my outline. I can add it that to again and I can actually uh, increase as I go along um, and add uh, more and more outlines as I actually go along there. So I'll press done there and so we've at least got our intro to beacons there. Down the bottom of the page, you can see some, uh, some materials there, some little tabs. We've got posts, notes, materials, um, and admin details. Uh, we're going to go through a few of those, but I want to start with posts. Posts is basically the main area where we put some content in. So I'm going to press on posts, and then I'm going to press plus. Um, my first topic, um, we need to select where this actually goes, this post. So I've only got one outline added so far. If I had numerous outlines or numerous pages, I could actually allocate it to a different page. Let's just go with introduction to beacons. And I might say um, this post is going to be about uh, starting, uh, sorry, we might go with finding an app to use for iBeacons. And then we can write our message there. So we can actually say, uh, here is a list of apps um, to be used with iBeacons and so on. And you can see at the top, I can save that as a draft or I can post it directly around. And I can also add some assignments. So I can do things like um, adding some, uh, some material. So I don't have any materials, but I can search the store. I can put some of my uh, photos and videos that are straight from my camera roll in there. 
uh, which is fantastic. Um, I can put an iTunes link and a web link. It could be a YouTube video that um, sits beautifully in the iTunes U format. Um, so I can do a list of different things there that actually goes with my message and the title for my actual post. So I'm just gonna press post there. It'll take a little bit of time to put that all together and you can actually see there that I've got my first little, um, I guess, content that I've put in my course. And you can just repeat that process. I could have quite a few posts if I wanted to going straight to my Beacon, um, my Beacon course introduction to iBeacon. So I could also start a discussion there. I can follow. I can do a range of different things, which is fantastic. And you can see there. If I go back now, and I go back to my library, you can see there that in my iBeacon course, I've got a post. I haven't got any discussions or any students or materials yet, but that's basically how you add content to your course. Um, a couple of other things that I wanted to show you quickly was when I go into my iBeacon course, how do I then, as I start to actually construct my course and actually how do I share it with my students? Well, I'm gonna press admin down the bottom at the moment, you can see enrollments are off. I can open that up. In my course settings, um, it's got a whole lot of course settings. It's also got course image. Now, I really need to actually add that before I can share it with my students. So I might just go choose from photo library and go straight to my camera roll. I think down the bottom here, I've got a, a quick picture of Rachel with a beacon in the background. That might be great. Your image size needs to be a, a, you know, a certain size for it actually to upload, I think it's 600 by 600, it says there in pixels. Um, and then basically what I can then do is go back to my course settings. You can see there I've got my uh, instruct instructors. I can add other contributors if I like. So if I find another ADE that would actually like to add some content, um, I can do that, which is fantastic. I can go to my enrollments. You can see my enrollments is currently off. But see this little code here, this is the code that I share with my students and basically they hit the code and they can enroll straight away, picks up their Apple IDs and I can see which students are actually going into my course at which time. Um, and I can also say, um, I could auto approve or I could ask for approval to stop anyone else actually coming into my private course. I can block students, I can enroll students. I can do a whole range of different things there in regard to um, my course. So that's basically how we actually can share a code and share our courses with our students. And then when we go back to the library, you'll be able to see in that top level there the students that are joining. You can actually see when they're logged on, when you create new content. So if I go into my here, let's just say I add a new outline, new title page saying uh, applications, or let's put learning zones and start to incorporate some learning zones into our beacon work. Press done. You can see there that I've got my outline, but I've also got pages as well. We can actually edit there too and actually um, create some more um, outlines for our pages as well. Uh, so we might have here too, we might have learning zones in here. And that just means that as I create my content there, um, we can actually uh, when I'm actually in my post, that if I actually edit and add a post, I can actually set it to my different outline, I guess subheadings that we can actually go through. So I think the best thing to actually do with iTunes U after you've watched this tutorial is just have a little bit of a play, have a look at what you can actually add. Um, you can start to add some really, really good content, whether it be um, if you're using, say, Book Creator and you want to share some books um, that can open up directly on your students' iPads with uh, Book Creator. Uh, explain everything. You can do a whole range of different content that we can now apply to our iTunes U uh, course. So look, that's just a really, really quick, we've got things like notes, you can take notes, students can take notes while uh, videos are playing from your materials. You can add a whole list of different materials at the top here um, to actually get going. You can do direct links so the kids don't have to navigate through the iTunes store, um, the app store to actually find apps that you want them to download and so on. So look, uh, the possibilities are endless with iTunes U. Very, very easy to create course materials. Um, I love that they're now getting more interactive um, with the discussions. I love the, the fact that I can actually create content now on my iPad and not just consume 
um, iTunes U courses as well. And this really opens it up, not only for teachers to start using a lot more, but also students to start creating their own course material as a form of assessment or as a form of, um, of study, I guess. So that's Paul Hamilton here, just quick overview of um, iTunes U, how you can actually start generating content on your iTunes U app for iPad. Paul Hamilton here, signing off.